Hello friends, this is Drew speaking. Today we're looking at the mental illness slash phenomenon slash complex iceberg. This iceberg was created by Lurker Lurking 000 on Reddit, and big shout out to them because I think this iceberg is really interesting. I typically stay in the lane of horror, sci-fi, creepy, internet kind of stuff, but I thought it was fascinating seeing all these weird disorders I'd never heard of before, and I thought it might be interesting to get outside of my wheelhouse as far as the iceberg game goes. I was a little hesitant to do this iceberg originally because I like to have visual aids on screen. I typically like to do things that have accompanying videos or movies or, or something I can show on screen while I go through the details. And these are mental illnesses, so it kind of makes it hard to do that, which is why I wanted to try something new this week. Every entry that I talk about today, I put through an AI image generator. So all of the pictures that you see in this video are actually AI generated. It's been really cool going through and gathering all these images, and it's interesting to see how the AI interprets some of these mental illnesses. And I should probably just say it to get it out of the way. I'm obviously not a doctor. I'm not a professional of any kind. This is just, you know, an idiot trying to figure out what some of these strange illnesses are and what the effects of them are. So, you know, you take everything I say here with a grain of salt and do your own research if you get really interested in anything specific. Also, the entries on the first three tiers of this iceberg are all very common things. Um, almost everyone will know what these are. Obviously, these illnesses get more and more obscure and interesting as the iceberg goes on. But for the first tier, I basically just walk you through what's on that tier, along with AI-generated images for each entry. And the second and third tiers, I just did one to two sentence explanations because those were pretty common as well. As always, if you want to skip ahead to any specific part of the video, I've timestamped everything, so you can just jump right into whatever tier you want. Anyway, I think that's enough blabbering for me. Thank you guys for watching. This is the Mental Illness Iceberg Explained. Tier 1. ADHD. Depression. Anxiety. Social anxiety. Dyslexia. Bipolar. Phobias. Autism. Tier 2. Schizophrenia. A severe mental disorder characterized by disordered thoughts, emotions, and perceptions, often leading to hallucinations, delusions, and social withdrawal. Panic disorder. An anxiety disorder characterized by sudden and repeated panic attacks, often accompanied by physical symptoms such as sweating, heart palpitations, and shortness of breath. OCD otherwise known as obsessive compulsive disorder, is a mental disorder characterized by reoccurring and unwanted thoughts, images, or impulses that lead to repetitive and compulsive behaviors or mental acts in an attempt to alleviate the anxiety caused by the obsessions. Seasonal Affective This is a type of depression that occurs during the fall and winter months, thought to be related to decreased exposure to sunlight. Postpartum Depression this is a mood disorder that affects some women after giving birth, characterized by feelings of sadness, anxiety, and irritability. Alcoholism. A chronic disease characterized by a strong craving for alcohol, loss of control over drinking, and withdrawal symptoms when alcohol use is stopped or reduced. Dementia. A group of symptoms characterized by a decline in cognitive function, including memory loss, impaired thinking, and personality changes, often associated with aging. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is a mental condition that can develop after experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event. Characterized by intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, avoidance behaviors, and high hyperarousal. Insomnia. This is a sleeping disorder characterized by falling or staying asleep or waking up too early and not being able to fall back to sleep. Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a progressive brain disorder that affects memory, thinking, and behavior, often leading to severe cognitive decline and functional impairment. Tier 3. Tourette's. Tourette's is a neurological disorder characterized by involuntary repetitive movements and vocalizations called tics. Bulimia. This is an eating disorder characterized by episodes of binge eating followed by purging behaviors such as vomiting or using laxatives, as well as feeling of shame and guilt about the behavior. Psychosis, a mental state in which a person loses touch with reality, experiencing hallucinations, delusions, disordered thinking, and often exhibiting abnormal behaviors. Anorexia, 
This is an eating disorder characterized by an extreme fear of weight gain, self-starvation, and an inaccurate perception of body weight and shape. Schizoaffective. This is a mental disorder characterized by a combination of symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations and delusions, as well as symptoms of mood disorders such as depression or mania. Borderline Personality Disorder This is characterized by intense and unstable emotions, impulse behavior, and difficulties with relationships and self-image. Hypochondria this is a condition in which a person obsessively worries about having a serious illness, despite little or no evidence of such an illness existing. Gender dysphoria. A condition in which a person experiences distress or discomfort due to a mismatch between their gender identity and the gender they were assigned at birth. Narcolepsy. A neurological disorder characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, sudden and uncontrollable episodes of falling asleep, and disrupted nighttime sleep. Binge eating disorder. An eating disorder characterized by recurrent episodes of eating large quantities of food, often feeling out of control and experiencing distress or guilt afterwards. Pika. Pika is an eating disorder that involves persistent cravings and consumption of non-food substances such as dirt, chalk, or paper. Imposter syndrome. This is a psychological pattern in which a person doubts their ability and accomplishments and feels like a fraud despite evidence to the contrary. Okay, as I said, we're moving into the fourth tier here. I hope you enjoyed those kind of speed rounds of the first three tiers, but this is where we get into some really interesting stuff. This is tier four. Premenstrual dysphoric. So premenstrual dysphoric disorder or PMDD is essentially a much more severe form of premenstrual syndrome, aka PMS. It occurs from a few days before a period to a few days after and can be so intense that women have trouble functioning in everyday life within this week just because of how much it affects the person. There's a pretty wide range of negative effects, everything from irritability and insomnia to paranoia and forgetfulness. Antisocial personality disorder. I think that antisocial is an interesting one because I find that the term is actually misused quite a bit. I hear this term thrown around a lot when people are talking about someone who doesn't want to be around people or is reclusive or something like that, which might not be completely wrong, but it misses the bigger picture, which is that an antisocial person, sometimes called a sociopath, basically disregards social norms. So an antisocial person is engaging with people just in manipulative and cruel ways. A big indicator of an antisocial person is lack of remorse and empathy. There are obviously varying degrees of this disorder, but people with antisocial personality disorder are more likely to lie, behave violently or impulsively, violate the law, and have problems with drug and alcohol use. Selective mutism. This is an anxiety disorder in which a person who is otherwise capable of speech becomes unable to speak when exposed to specific situations, places, or people. It's often tied in with social anxiety, and I'm sure anyone with anxiety has moments that resemble this, but in order to meet the official criteria for selective mutism, you have to exhibit the following behaviors. Consistent failure to speak in specific social situations despite speaking in other situations, the disturbance interferes with educational or occupational achievement, and the disturbance is not better accounted for by communication disorder. ODD, or Oppositional Defiant Disorder, is defined as a pattern of angry or irritable mood, argumentative or defiant behavior, or vindictiveness. This behavior is usually targeted towards peers, parents, teachers, and other authority figures. There's another disorder that is somewhat similar called Conduct Disorder, the difference being that Conduct Disorder involves tendency towards destruction of property, theft, and violent acts towards animals, which are not patterns of behavior found in a person with ODD. Narcissistic Personality Disorder. You've probably probably heard this term thrown about, especially in the realm of politics in the last few years, but narcissistic personality disorder is characterized by a lifelong pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance. Just a few examples of NPD that match the criteria are a grandiose sense of self-importance, preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love, and believing that they're special. DID. Dissociative Identity Disorder, previously known as Multiple Personality Disorder, is fairly well known, mostly because it shows up from time to time in different media, like the movie Split, for instance, which I thought put a pretty good horror spin on it, but that's besides the point. A person suffering from this literally has multiple personalities, usually acting as completely different people with different names, tastes, and behavior. A good example is Kim Noble, who I mentioned in my Disturbing Paintings Iceberg because she has over a dozen different personalities that are all artists. The bizarre thing about this is how the personalities all have completely different styles. It's worth looking into if you're interested. Body Dysmorphia Body dysmorphia is a disorder in which a person believes that their body has imperfections that are not noticeable by other people. 
The most common and extreme cases are of people who believe that they're overweight despite being very thin and often actually underweight. Strangely, body dysmorphia is actually common in the world of athletics, particularly bodybuilding, where bodybuilders see their bodies as too thin and scrawny no matter how much muscle they put on. This can sometimes lead to an obsession with exercise or even plastic surgery. Trichotillomania, otherwise known as hair pulling disorder, is the compulsion to pull or pick hair off your body, most commonly on the head or eyebrows. The disorder is usually associated associated with OCD. Although people with body dysmorphia are known to pull out hair as well, it's driven by the need to improve their perceived looks, while trichotillomania is purely a compulsive disorder usually caused by stress or anxiety. Agoraphobia. Before researching this, I had the loose idea about agoraphobia, which was something like a fear of going outside or fear of open spaces, and that's not completely off the mark. What I found interesting is that the actual fear is being trapped in an unsafe place with no easy way to escape. So any open space or crowded area or even a bus can fall under this category, which is why it often causes an agoraphobe to never want to leave their home. Dysgraphia. Dysgraphia is a neurological disorder of written expression that interferes with practically all aspects of the writing process, including spelling, legibility, word spacing and sizing, and expression. It's a learning disability that impairs writing ability and fine motor skills. One thing that's interesting is that it's actually very difficult to diagnose because it's hard to distinguish whether someone has the disorder or is just being lazy. Exploding head syndrome. Okay, I have to admit, this one definitely stood out to me while I originally perused the iceberg, and well, it's not as insane as it sounds. Someone with exploding head syndrome will sometimes experience very loud and frightening noises while falling asleep or waking up. What? Man, that sounds brutal. And they have no idea what causes it. Imagine having to deal with that your whole life. Also, whose idea was it to name it this? I don't know about you, but I kind of imagined a disorder where you hallucinate people's heads exploding or maybe your own head feels like it's going to explode. I don't know, I'm not trying to downplay it or anything, but that is just a wildly misleading name. Discalculula. This is a learning disability in math that impairs an individual's ability to learn number-related concepts, perform accurate math calculations, reason and problem-solve, and perform other basic math skills. They basically struggle with important concepts in math, like understanding the difference between larger and smaller quantities. Let's be honest, we all tried to self-diagnose ourselves with this one back in the 8th grade. But the truth is, unlike the poor people who suffer from this, I just suck at math. Shell shock. Shell shock is actually what they diagnosed returning soldiers of World War I with before we had the term PTSD. As far as I can tell, there's no real difference. I will say that George Carlin has a great bit on the subject of shell shock, but that has nothing to do with this iceberg, so let's move along. Pyromania. Pyromania is an impulse disorder characterized by repeatedly failing to resist impulses to set things on fire. Pyromaniacs start fires to release anxiety and tension, or sometimes for arousal. That is one hell of a kink, I gotta say. Kleptomania. Similar to pyromania, kleptomania is another impulse disorder described as failing to resist the impulse to steal. The interesting thing about kleptos is that they're not stealing for monetary gain or personal use, but instead for the thrill of it or the stress release factor. ARFID, or Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, is an eating disorder characterized by highly selective eating habits, disturbing feeding patterns, or both. It often results in significant nutrition and energy deficiencies. RFID differs from other disorders involving food as it doesn't involve any distress about body shape or size or fears of fatness. It's caused by anxiety or phobia of food and or eating. Man, a phobia of food sounds awful. The worst part is a lot of times this develops in children, which just makes me sad. Tier 5. Madonna Whore Complex. Okay, this one is interesting. This is essentially the inability to maintain sexual arousal within a committed loving relationship. Yeah, that sounds like a big problem. The idea is that someone with this complex does not want to have a relationship with someone who's overly promiscuous and doesn't want to do sexual things he's deemed as dirty with someone he loves. I gotta be honest, I thought this was going to be about Madonna the singer, and I'm a little disappointed. But interesting note, Freud originally identified this and called it psychic impotence, which is a great name, although it sounds like someone trying to suppress their boner with psychic powers. Schizoid Personality Disorder. Okay, there's a lot to this one, and I find it fascinating, but the basic description of schizoid personality disorder is lack of interest in social relationships, a tendency toward a solitary or sheltering lifestyle, secretiveness, emotional coldness, detachment, and apathy. So, there's a lot there. 
But a large part of this disorder is feeling disconnected from life itself. More like you're just an observer of your life instead of an active occupant. Oftentimes schizoids are uninterested in relationships and are even asexual. Another interesting thing that's really common in schizoids is daydreaming and fantasies. These internal fantasies often become so elaborate that they begin to take priority over real life. There's actually a few famous people thought to have had schizoid personality disorder including Bill Gates, Karl Marx, and even Albert Einstein. I mean what a list. Stockholm syndrome. This one is not too uncommonly heard of, but it's essentially the effect of hostages forming bonds and even falling in love with their captors or abusers. People develop these positive feelings towards their captors or abusers over time as a coping mechanism. Schizotypal personality disorder. This is characterized by thought disorder, paranoia, derealization, transient psychosis, and unconventional beliefs. Basically, people with this disorder feel pronounced discomfort in forming and maintaining social connections with other people, primarily due to the belief that other people harbor negative thoughts and views about them. It's similar to a schizoid, except that a schizotypal person frequently interprets situations as being strange or having unusual meanings for them. Paranoid Personality Disorder Speaking of paranoid, people with this personality disorder may be hypersensitive, easily insulted, and habitually relate to the world by vigilant scanning of the environment for clues or suggestions that may validate their fears or biases. They're eager observers, and they often think they're in danger and look for signs and threats of that danger, potentially not appreciating other interpretations or evidence. God complex. A God complex is interesting. It's not actually recognized as a disorder, although it is associated with some, and it mostly just seems to be a way to describe people who won't ever admit to being wrong, even in the face of strong evidence or unsolvable problems. This person might also expect special treatment or act entitled with no regard to the conventions of society. Histrionic personality disorder. This disorder is characterized by an excessive pattern of attention seeking. People with HPD have a high desire for attention, make loud and inappropriate appearances, exaggerate their behaviors and emotions, and crave stimulation. It can be hard to diagnose because some people are just socially awkward and obnoxious, which does not necessarily equal histrionic. It's no surprise that people with this disorder are often drawn to theater and performance. Avoidant Personality Disorder This one involves someone actively avoiding social situations and relationships for fear of being rejected. As much as they want these things, they can't stand the thought of rejection no matter how unlikely. They assume that any social outing will result in ridicule, humiliation, or rejection, and therefore only indulge in relationships or social situations where they know with certainty they'll be accepted. They'll even abandon relationships preemptively due to anxiety of the oncoming rejection. Mass hysteria. Otherwise known as mass psychogenic illness, this involves the spread of illness symptoms through a population where there's no infectious agent responsible for the contagion. Basically, it's a rapid spread of illness signs and symptoms affecting members of a cohesive group. The earliest examples of this that still pop up from time to time are in religious contexts where people believe that demons are possessing or affecting their village or family, and these effects rapidly spread. One of the most famous examples, perhaps because of its absurdity, is what's known as the Dancing Plague of 1518, when a woman began to dance fervently in the street, soon after followed by dozens of other people who seemed to not be able to stop. There are accounts of people actually dancing to death. Man, this has always been one of my favorite weird historical events. It's just so strange. The Delusional Disorder Delusional disorder is pretty straightforward and is characterized by someone who has delusions, but with no accompanying prominent hallucinations. Just to be clear, delusion is defined as a false, fixed belief that is not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. An example would be someone believing that they ingested poison and that they're dying even after a doctor confirms that there's no actual poison in their body. There are actually two types of delusions involved in this disorder. Non-bizarre delusions are like the poison example I just made. Although untrue, this is something that can and has happened in the world, whereas a bizarre delusion would be things that don't make sense or are impossible like someone believing they can fly. Paraphrenia. So, paraphrenia is like a combination of schizophrenia and delusional disorder, differing from delusional disorder in the sense that there are hallucinations that accompany the delusions. Agnosia. Agnosia is the inability to process sensory information, meaning they can't recognize a person or object using one or more senses. Agnosia is actually sort of an umbrella term because there 
there are many variations under it involving the specific senses that are affected. For instance, auditory agnosia is the inability to distinguish speech from any other non-speech sound, or environmental agnosia, which is the inability to locate a specific room or building that one is familiar with, as well as the inability to provide directions for how to arrive at a particular location. These are very specific examples, but there are cases where multiple senses overlap, and honestly, I can't even imagine suffering from one of these, let alone multiple. Olfactory Reference Syndrome Okay, this is a weird one. Olfactory reference syndrome is a condition in which the person believes that they have terrible BO even though they don't actually smell. I think we've all at one point or another worried we smelled bad, but this takes it to a whole new level. The person misinterprets other behaviors like sniffing, touching their nose, or opening a window as being referential to an unpleasant body odor, which in reality is non-existent and cannot be detected by other people. Excoriation Disorder Excoriation disorder is a mental illness related to obsessive compulsive disorder characterized by repeated picking at one's own skin which results in areas of swollen or broken skin and causes significant disruption in their life. It's usually so frequent or bad enough to cause tissue damage. These types of disorders really sound like a living hell. Persecution Complex Persecution Complex, or persecutory delusion, is a severe form of paranoia in which someone believes that an individual or group are conspiring to harm them despite lack of evidence to support the claim. Napoleon Complex Okay, I'm sure you've heard about this one at some point or another. Napoleon Complex, or small man syndrome, is characterized by overly aggressive or domineering social behavior, such as lying about earnings, and carries the implication that such behavior is compensation for the subject's physical or social shortcomings. Tier 6. Fatal Familial Insomnia There's something really disturbing about this one to me. Fatal insomnia is a genetic disorder that's primary symptom is trouble with sleep. The thing is, while mild at first, the lack of sleep gradually becomes total insomnia. No sleep at all. This obviously has its downsides, such as speech problems, coordination problems, and dementia. Worst of all, it eventually leads to death anywhere between two months to two years, with no known cure. Capgris Delusion Okay, everyone hop aboard the weird train. Capgris delusion is a psychiatric disorder in which a person holds a delusion that a friend, spouse, parent, or pet has been replaced by an identical imposter. One example is of a woman who believed that her husband had been replaced by another unrelated man. She refused to sleep with the imposter, locked her bedroom at night, and asked her son for a gun. At times, she believed her husband was her long-deceased father. She easily recognized other family members and would misidentify her husband only. This is a spooky one, not just for the person suffering the delusion, but for the loved one who's not recognized as themselves, which must be heartbreaking. There's actually a category of delusions like this that include not only people, but objects as well. There's even been cases in which patients hold the belief that time has been substituted. Weird. Alien Hand Syndrome this is a very rare condition in which people experience their limbs acting seemingly on their own without conscious control over the actions, most commonly affecting the left hand. Reminds me of one of my favorite mangas, Parasite, but clearly there's no actual alien parasite here, but instead it seems there's a disconnect between thought and action. In a lot of cases, this causes people to forcibly stop one hand with their other hand, which I can't hear that without thinking of Evil Dead 2. I mean, come on. Folia Doe meaning folly of two, also known as shared psychosis, is a collection of rare psychiatric syndromes in which symptoms of a delusional belief, and sometimes hallucinations, are transmitted from one individual to another. There are several strange cases of this, and a lot of them are concerning actual twins, like the Erickson sisters, for instance. When Ursula Erickson ran in front of a bus, and shortly after, her sister Sabina Erickson did the same thing. Lima Syndrome Lima Syndrome is essentially the inverse of Stockholm Syndrome, where the abductors actually develop sympathy for their hostages or victims. Somatoparaphrenia. Okay, so somatoparaphrenia is a type of monothematic delusion where the patient denies ownership of a limb or an entire side of their body, even if provided with undeniable proof that the limb belongs to and is attached to their own body. The patient produces elaborate confabulations about whose limb it really is or how the limb ended up on their body. The weird thing is, one form of treatment is called mirror therapy, where the patient sees their reflection, and this seems to actually work. Once the mirror's taken away, however, they tend to go back to disowning the limb. Oedipus Complex 
The Oedipus Complex is a psychoanalytic theory proposed by Sigmund Freud in 1899. It states that children have possessive sexual desires for their opposite sex parent while viewing their same sex parents as a rival and that the complex is resolved when children overcome their incestuous and competitive emotions and begin to view their same sex parent as a role model. This is obviously named after the mythical Greek king who killed his father and married his mother. Rumination Syndrome Rumination syndrome is a strange condition that only appears in infants, children, and the mentally disabled. It's characterized by effortless regurgitation of most meals following consumption due to the involuntary contraction of the muscles around the abdomen. Unlike typical vomiting, rumination is typically described as effortless and unforced. There's seldom nausea preceding the expulsion, and the undigested food lacks the bitter taste and odor of stomach acid and bile. Erotomania Erotomania is a rare, paranoid condition that manifests as an individual's unfounded belief that another person is in love with them. This disorder is predominantly observed in females who are shy, dependent, and have limited sexual experience. The object of the delusion is often a male who is unattainable due to factors such as high social status, financial status, marriage, or lack of interest. The individual may also develop an obsession with an imaginary or deceased person or someone they've never met. A common part of this delusion is believing to have gotten secret messages from their supposed admirer through what are actually mere coincidences. This is also known as delusion of reference. One example is of a patient who is obsessed with British monarch George V. She had stood outside Buckingham Palace for hours at a time, believing that the king was communicating his desire for her by moving the curtains. Now that's just sad. Alice in Wonderland Syndrome This is a neuropsychological condition that causes a distortion of perception. People may experience distortions in visual perceptions of objects, such as appearing smaller or larger, or appearing to be closer or further away than they actually are. Anton Babimsky Syndrome This is a weird condition where a blind person won't accept the fact that they have no vision, and on the contrary claim they can see. That might be the most obvious delusion we've covered, and man, I, I can only imagine the confabulation you would have to employ to try and convince yourself of this. Sorry, but... Uh, this one just shocked me. Charles Bonnet Syndrome Speaking of blindness, Charles Bonnet Syndrome, also known as visual release hallucinations, is a condition where people who have severe loss of sight hallucinate visions. These hallucinations can be classified as either simple or complex. Simple visual hallucinations are commonly characterized by shapes and grid-like patterns, while complex visual hallucinations consist of highly detailed representations of people and objects. It's interesting the difference between Charles Bonnet Syndrome and Anton Syndrome. In one, the blind person believes they can still see and lies about it, and in the other, the person is actually seeing things, but they're not actually real. Reduplicative Paramnesia this is the delusional belief that a place or location has been duplicated, existing in two or more places simultaneously, or that it's been relocated to another site. So just to give an example of what this looks like, this is an account of a patient who suffered a brain injury. A few days after his admission to the neurobehavioral center, he could give details of the injury, could remember his doctor's names, and could learn new information and retain it indefinitely. He exhibited, however, a distinct abnormality of orientation for place. While he quickly learned and remembered that he was at the Jamaica Plains Veteran Hospital, he insisted that the hospital was located in Taunton, Massachusetts, his hometown. Under close questioning, he acknowledged that Jamaica Plain was part of Boston and admitted it would be strange for there to be two Jamaica Plain Veterans Hospitals. Nonetheless, he insisted that he was presently hospitalized in a branch of the Jamaica Plains Veteran Hospital located in Taunton. At one time, he stated that the hospital was located in the spare bedroom of his house. This is the type of thing that just blows my mind. I mean, it's so eerie to me and almost comical the nonchalant way that people with delusional syndromes like this make such bizarre claims. To them, that's just the reality. It's, it's infinitely interesting to me. Subjective doubles. This is a rare delusional misidentification syndrome in which a person experiences the delusion that they have a double or doppelganger with the same appearance, but usually with different character traits that's leading a life of its own. One example is of a patient, a 50-year-old married homemaker and the mother of five children. She firmly believed that a double existed who had replaced herself in her husband's affections. She was convinced that the grooves in her fingers were smoother and that the double had even taken her fingerprints. She was so concerned about the existence of a double that she required the constant presence of her driver's license to reassure herself that she was the real one. That is wild. Mirrored self misidentification. 
This is a delusion characterized by the inability to recognize one's own reflected image. The weird thing is that they can recognize other people's reflections, but they believe their own to be another person entirely, or even a younger or older version of themselves. Whoa. Akinetic mutism. This is a medical term used to describe patients who show little to no movement or speech abilities. It was first described in 1941 and is characterized by a lack of motor functions such as facial expressions, gestures, and speech. People suffering from this sometimes exhibit slowed movement and speaking in monosyllables or single syllable words. Patients with akinetic mutism are not paralyzed but just simply lack the will to move, with many patients describing that as soon as they will or attempt a movement, a counter will or resistance rises up to meet them. Well, that's spooky. Catatonia. Catatonia is a complex neuropsychiatric behavioral syndrome that is characterized by abnormal movements, immobility, abnormal behaviors, and withdrawal. It's classified under several symptoms such as no or very little verbal response, mimicking other people's speech and movement, and catalepsy, which is defined as passive induction of a posture held against gravity. The images of people doing this are just really creepy to me for some reason. Jonah Complex the Jonah Complex is a fear of success or fear of being one's best. This fear prevents self-actualization or the realization of one's own potential. The name comes from Jonah, the biblical prophet's evasion of his calling to prophesy the destruction of Nineveh. Well, he ended up being eaten by a giant fish, so. Tier 7. Ganser Syndrome. Ganser syndrome is a rare condition. Its main feature is approximate answers, where a person nearly comes to the correct answer, but not quite. Like, if you ask them how many legs a cat has, they might say three or five. It's sometimes referred to as prison psychosis because it's found so often in prison inmates. Cotard syndrome. Cotard syndrome, also known as walking corpse syndrome, is a rare psychiatric disorder characterized by a delusion of nihilism, where patients deny or negate the existence of various things such as body parts, themselves, family members, or even the whole world. The neurological basis of this disorder is related to facial recognition, where a lack of connection between the fusiform face area and amygdala results in a failure to experience a sense of self. Cotard syndrome is extremely rare, but is encountered in patients with schizophrenia, severe depression, depression, bipolar disorder, and brain injury or tumors. The term was coined by French neurologist Jules Cotard when a patient came to him who firmly believed that she had no internal organs or brain and would live forever. Fregoli Delusion the Fregoli delusion is a rare psychiatric condition characterized by a false belief that different people are in fact the same person. People with this delusion often believe that someone they don't know is following them and impersonating other people, even though the deluded person perceives the physical appearance of the stranger as being different from their typical appearance. Munchausen syndrome. This is a mental disorder in which a person repeatedly and deliberately acts as if they have a physical or mental illness when they're not really sick. It's named for Baron von Munchausen in 18 century German police officer who was known for embellishing the stories of his life and experiences. People with Munchausen syndrome often experience physical symptoms such as chest pain, stomach problems, or fever rather than those of mental disorder. Symptoms include lying about symptoms, sabotaging medical tests like putting blood in their urine for instance, or harming themselves in order to get attention and sympathy. Wait, did I just say that one of the symptoms is lying about symptoms? Whoa, symptomception. Delusional parasitosis. This is a mental disorder characterized by an unshaken belief of having been infested by a parasite or bug that doesn't actually exist. I think a lot of these paranoia-related illusions are terrifying, like thinking someone's stolen your identity or that people are conspiring to kill you, but honestly, these body horror-level delusions scare me even more. I mean, the idea of bugs, worms, or parasites of any kind crawling in my body is just so disgusting, but it would be way worse if someone told me that they didn't actually exist. I don't think it's an actual case of delusional parasitosis because it's a drug-related thing, but I can't help but think of the opening to a scanner darkly where the man can't stop scratching at the bugs he thinks are crawling all over him. Jerusalem Syndrome Jerusalem syndrome is the effect of an otherwise stable and healthy person becoming psychotic while visiting Jerusalem. It manifests in many different ways and by people with various religious backgrounds. It's characterized by an intense religious theme like believing yourself to be the Messiah or that the world will soon be ending. The psychosis typically resolves to full recovery after a few weeks or after being removed from the area. Messiah Complex Speaking of thinking you're Messiah, the Messiah Complex is a state of mind in which an individual holds a belief that they're destined to become a savior today or in the near future. It differs from Jerusalem complex as it happens outside of Jerusalem and does not have to tie to a specific religion. Intermetamorphosis. 
This consists of patients believing that they can see others change into someone else in both external appearance and internal personality. It's usually close friends or relatives, but can also be celebrities and politicians. I have to say, it would be pretty horrifying just to see people completely shapeshift in front of you. Stendhal Syndrome Stendhal Syndrome, also known as Florence Syndrome, is a psychological disorder that causes an individual to experience a range of physical and emotional symptoms in response to viewing or experiencing art, especially works of art that are particularly beautiful or awe-inspiring. Now, that doesn't sound too uncommon, but this isn't a simple emotional reaction. Symptoms include rapid heartbeat, dizziness, confusion, sweating, and even hallucinations. Damn, imagine being in such awe of a work of art that you have a total meltdown and start seeing shit. Diogenes Syndrome also known as senile squalor syndrome, this is a disorder characterized by extreme self-neglect, domestic squalor, and social withdrawal. People with Diogenes syndrome typically live in extreme squalor, with clutter and garbage piled up in their living spaces, and often refuse to bathe or care for themselves. They may also hoard items that others would consider to be garbage or useless, such as newspapers or empty containers. The condition is often accompanied by social withdrawal and a lack of interest in connecting with others, leading to isolation. A lot of people you would see on the show hoarders would fit the bill, although hoarding is only one aspect of Diogenes Syndrome, and so it's possible to be a hoarder without having any of the other traits. Boanthropy. Um, man, this one is so simple yet so weird. Boanthropy is a psychological disorder in which the sufferer believes he or she is a bovine. That is to say, they'll try to live their life as a bovine, such as walking on all fours and eating grass in the same way that a cow, ox, or buffalo would. Even weirder, apparently people have pegged the biblical figure King Nebuchadnezzar as having boanthropy because of a verse that says, was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. Yeah, moving on. Mental illness in animals. This is sort of an all-encompassing entry about mental illness in animals, which is rarely talked about. While researching the subject, I did find some interesting anecdotes on Reddit, like user Dingo Biscuits, who wrote, My friend's dog had a phantom pregnancy. After the pregnancy, she thought she had invisible puppies, and if you went behind the couch where the invisible puppies supposedly lived, she'd go for your jugular. It's an interesting area of study. Phaedra Complex The Phaedra Complex is a psychological concept that refers to a woman's unconscious sexual desire for her stepson. It's named after the Greek mythological character Phaedra who fell in love with her stepson. I'm actually very familiar with this one. See, there's this psychology website that really goes into examples of this, but I can't remember the name of the site. Truman Syndrome. This is a type of delusion in which the person believes that their life is a staged reality show and that everything around them is part of a scripted plot. The term Truman Syndrome is derived from the 1988 movie The Truman Show, in which the main character Truman gradually realizes that his entire life has been broadcasted as a TV show without his knowledge. If anything, this is a great excuse to rewatch The Truman Show, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. Clinical Lycanthropy. Clinical lycanthropy is a rare and complex psychiatric disorder in which an individual believes that they can transform into an animal, typically a wolf or a dog. The condition is obviously named after the fictional illness of werewolves. People with this disorder may exhibit a range of symptoms, including behaving like an animal, such as crawling on all fours or barking, hearing or seeing things that support their belief, such as hearing the howls of wolves, delusional thinking, such as thinking that they're being hunted by people or animals. It's so crazy that lycanthropy is now a legit term completely based on mythical horror stories. Tier 8. Autophagia. Autophagia, in simple terms, is the eating of one's own body. Which sounds really brutal, but typically autophagia is just describing someone who bites their nails, cheeks, lips, and fingers, which is pretty commonly associated with anxiety. However, autophagia can actually get pretty dangerous. In some cases, people will even bite their fingers with such severity that they must be amputated. Yikes. Renfeld Syndrome Renfeld Syndrome, commonly referred to as clinical vampirism, is about what you'd expect. It's a psychiatric disorder characterized by an obsession with drinking blood. This can escalate to the point of a patient eating small animals alive. And yes, in case you were wondering, Renfeld was Dracula's servant in the original novel. Kluver Busey Syndrome Kluver Busey syndrome is a syndrome resulting from bilateral lesions of the medial temporal lobe, and it has a slew of strange effects like docility, dietary changes, and hyperphagia, hyperorality, which is described as having an oral tendency or compulsion to examine objects by mouth, and hypersexuality, body integrity dysmorphia. This is one of the most brutal and disturbing disorders on the list. BID is a condition where a person feels a strong and persistent desire to amputate one or more of their healthy limbs or to become paraplegic. 
Individuals with BID often feel that a part of their body is foreign or not theirs, and they may experience distress, anxiety, or depression as a result. This has the effect of many people who suffer from it requesting that doctors amputate their limbs or, in very desperate cases, try and do it themselves. Anthropophobia. So, anthropophobia is essentially the fear of people. It often gets muddled in with other social phobias, but the key difference is that it includes even a single person, not just crowds. Martyr Complex. The martyr complex is a psychological pattern in which a person seeks out or creates situations in which they feel victimized or persecuted, and then responds to those situations with self-sacrifice or suffering in order to gain sympathy or praise from others. Individuals with a martyr complex may engage in self-sabotaging behavior such as overworking, neglecting their own needs, or taking on more responsibilities than they can handle in order to maintain their sense of martyrdom. Fully in famille. This is basically an extension of Folia Doe, which I covered on Tier 6, except that the shared psychosis goes beyond just two people and takes control of a family. One really eerie example of this is the Barari deaths, wherein a family of 11 members were found hanging in their home in Delhi. This was ruled as a case of shared psychosis led by the youngest son of the matriarch. Another strange example is the Tromp family, who all went missing and then suddenly reappeared in various locations across New South Wales. Mark and Jacoba Tromp, along with their adult children, Rihanna, Mitchell and Ella left their home in Sylvan in their family car and began driving towards New South Wales. Along the way, they became increasingly paranoid and disconnected from each other and the world around them. They eventually abandoned their car and separated, with each family member heading in a different direction. Obviously, there are a lot of conspiracy theories involved in this last one, but I had to mention it because it was so strange. Munchausen Syndrome by Proxy this is a rare but serious form of child abuse in which a caregiver, usually a parent, fabricates or induces illness in a child in order to gain attention or sympathy for themselves. The caregiver may create symptoms by giving the child medications or substances, inducing infections or injury, or manipulating medical test results. They may also falsify medical records or exaggerate symptoms to convince doctors that the child is ill. An example of this is Dee Dee Blanchard, who was a caregiver to her daughter Gypsy Rose, who she claimed had numerous medical conditions including leukemia, muscular dystrophy, and intellectual disability. Dee Dee subjected Gypsy to unnecessary medical procedures including surgeries and medications and confined her to a wheelchair. I mean, my god. Well, she got what was coming to her, I guess, when Gypsy killed her. Another really bizarre and sad case is of Maribeth Tenning, who was convicted in 1987 of killing one of her nine children, whom she claimed had died of sudden infant death syndrome. But it later emerged that Tenning had likely suffocated all nine of her children over a period of several years. Jesus Christ. Talk about ending on a sad note. Okay, folks, we did it. That was the mental illness slash phenomenon slash complex iceberg. Once again, that iceberg was posted by Lurker Lurking 0 on Reddit, so be sure to go give a thumbs up to that post. As always, I got to give a shout out to Kill Me Katie for letting me use their music in my videos. And of course, a big thank you to all my patrons, Naomi Romero, Soma, Krusty the Crab, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate the support. And if you want to get a shout out like that at the end of every one of my videos, along with a bunch of bonus content, you can go check out my Patreon, the description's below. But I appreciate you guys watching at all, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did you like the AI art? Do you think that's something that could facilitate more icebergs in the future? Let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Grief Speaking. Goodbye, friends.